Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. My Audible pick for March is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. It's a novel about a coming-of-age slave named Cora who learns about the Underground Railroad and decides to go on a journey. Now, I'm not typically drawn to slave stories, but this book came highly recommended to me by Mama Jennifer over at the Community Book Center in New Orleans, so I decided to give it a try. Right now, Audible is offering my listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Use your free offer to download The Underground Railroad or any of the thousands of titles available on Audible right now and let me know what you think. Just go to audibletrial.com backslash unicorns talk to get started now. Welcome to Unicorns Talk Podcast, your weekly girl talk about black women, our healing and manifestation. My name is Latrice Sampson Richards, your life enhancement coach, and together we're going to live, laugh, and learn to love all of life's little messes. While I am a licensed clinician, please keep in mind that this show is not a substitute for your own relationship with a mental health provider. Let's go. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode 62 of Unicorns Talk podcast. My name is Latrice Sampson Richards. I am your life enhancement coach. And as usual, I'm super excited to be here with y'all today. I'm always excited to be with y'all. Y'all already know that or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm really happy to be here, though. Today, we have a a great, great topic. We getting naked today, y'all. We're going to talk about that a little bit more uh, in a little while. But uh, I'm really excited about it. You know, um, my week has been really good. Like, the last couple of weeks I've been traveling and stuff. Um, last week I actually, well, y'all know I was in New Orleans. Um, and then I drove from New Orleans to Tallahassee to see my sister. Uh, she moved into a new apartment or whatever. It's been a while since I've been out there. So it was nice to kind of spend some time with her and like rekindle and things like that. So that was pretty cool. I also had a speaking engagement uh, with the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta. It's actually the Chi Theta Zeta chapter of Zeta Phi Beta out there in Tallahassee. They hosted a um, like a forum uh, in collaboration with the Leon County Health Department on gun violence and black mental health. And so it was a really great discussion. Those ladies were awesome. Um, You know, they asked a lot of really great questions. We had a real talk conversation about mental health in the black community and the role that we as black women play in the healing of our community. And um, I'm, I'm just honored to have had an opportunity to participate uh, in that forum. Shout out to Khadijah for reaching out to me. Um, shout out to my sister for putting me on. Well, she didn't put me on. She just was like, I know somebody. <laughs> so, um, you know, thank you so much to the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta for having me come out. Plus, while I was out there, um, so I came up across this uh, little place like a eatery or whatever and it was called chicken salad chick let me tell you y'all that chicken salad was so fucking good <laughs> like I love chicken salad like in and they had like all different varieties of chicken salad like that chicken salad was really really good and they also had so you know I'm trying to like do better with my little carbs or whatever if I can make some babies or whatever so um I, I tried not to do like a sandwich or nothing I just did like a scoop of the chicken salad and then I did the broccoli salad on the side which have y'all had broccoli salad before Gah. broccoli salad is the bee's knees let me tell you like no like legit broccoli salad is the shit like it I went I mean that's not the first place that I've had broccoli salad but it was really good and it made me be like you know what this is something like I feel like I need to have in my life on a regular basis <laughs> which means that I need to learn how to cook bro- like how to make broccoli salad so I did a I looked up a recipe online and I you know tweaked it to my own liking I put some pistachios in there. I love pistachios. I also put some, um, girl, what's that? Uh, cause normally they do it with like cranberries or raisins. I did golden raisins cause I really like golden raisins for whatever reason. They're not too sweet. They're like just sweet enough. Um, so anyway, needless to say my chicken salad was the bomb.com. Excuse me. My broccoli salad was the bomb.com and I actually ate the last of it today, but I fucked it up. Um, <laughs> so shout out to Tallahassee. Um, I, I really enjoyed my time there. And then when I came back, 
back, uh, you know, just trying to catch up on sleep and stuff like that. And then this weekend, I actually attended the Urban League of Broward County Young Professionals had a um, I Am Empowered Young Professionals Summit. So I attended, you know, I, I participated as an attendee um, because I'm all about personal development. And so, uh, you know, I don't have to be on on program in order to attend events like this, you know. So I attended the event. Um, it was on February 23rd um, at, and it was hosted at Nova Southeastern University here in Fort Lauderdale. And it was amazing. They had some great speakers. I was able to meet and make some connections uh, with uh, other urban leaguers all over the country. Uh, I made some contacts with people that uh, I want to do some work together and to try to further our causes and things and help heal our community. So that's always a plus. Uh, so shout out to the Urban League of Broward County YP. Um, I'm 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 gonna go ahead and put in my application for membership. Um, if you are not engaged or participating in your community. I'm not saying you got to join Urban League in order to do that. Urban League not paying me nothing for nothing that I say about Urban League. You know what I'm saying? But it is an option. It is an opportunity for you to get involved in your community. You know, um, so, so many of us just spend so much time online that we're losing connection with real life people and like boots on the ground kind of stuff in the community. It's not always about sharing a hashtag. You need to actually get out there and start doing stuff and making an impact in your community and organizations like the Urban League, um, which is a national organization, organizations like the Young Leadership Council, which is the organization I volunteered with when I was in New Orleans, like these types of organizations, they are boots on the ground in the communities. And so if you can give your time, it don't matter how much time you have, if you only have one hour a month to give, give that one hour a month, like it really makes a difference. And they need people in all capacities. So even if working with kids is not your thing, or working with people is not your thing, if you do some behind the scenes shit, they need that help too. If you good with websites, they need that help too, you know, so definitely get involved in your community and, and help out whenever you can. And then Saturday night, I actually went to um, a 60th birthday party. And it was so cool. It was my first like, Jamaican party here in America. <laughs> It was cool, you know, it was cool. One of my friends, her uncle had a, I think it was her uncle, either her uncle or her cousin had a 60th birthday party. Uh, I believe the theme was let's eat. And let me tell you, bitch, the food was rolling. They had this lobster bisque and it was so good. I was, I, well, I wasn't surprised, but I was surprised at the same time. But I wasn't surprised like, oh, I didn't think the food was going to be good. I just was surprised like, damn, like this, this food is good. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, so it was a good surprise. So my weekend was really good. My week has been really busy. I'm still looking for a job and things, you know what I'm saying? But you know, that's going to work out soon. I just feel it in my bones. I know that's going to work out for me real soon. And you know, I'm gonna just keep on keeping on. Y'all know that song? Keep on keeping. Uh, uh, what, what song is that? I really got to you. What, what that was from? I, th I feel like that was a uh, girl, Whitley Nim, <laughs> a different world. Y'all remember that episode? Anyway, if you haven't already, please make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or anywhere that you're listening right now. Use hashtag unicorns talk pod across all of your social media to let me know that you're listening and make sure that you share it in your stories on your timeline tag me or whatever so I can say hey girl hey or whatever and repost it um, it's really helpful for me when you share me with your people uh, and let them know that you like this show and that they might like this show um, and uh, I appreciate it for real for real all right all right so Go ahead and press pause right now so you could go get your pen and paper ready because y'all know, as I told you already, we get naked today. All right. Yes. But as naked. <laughs> In fact, I am actually naked right now as I record. Absolutely, completely, but as naked, like for real, for real. And so, I mean, technically, I'm speaking in a literal sense right now, but the reality is that every week 
I get naked for y'all every single week in my little corner of my bedroom with my mic and my recorder set up all up in my closet so I could get the best sound possible. I pour my heart out week after week for all to hear. And I do this partly because I know that you need me to. Okay. I truly believe in the power of sharing our stories with each other, especially the stories that make us feel uncomfortable. So that's why I share my journey with y'all. I open myself up. And so, yes, I do this for you. But in reality, I do it more for me than anything. I need this. I need to be able to be real and to be raw and to be bare. And so getting naked helps me to heal all kinds of things not just the physical act of being naked, but the figurative act of getting naked as well. You know, I've been struggling all week to figure out what I was going to talk about for today's episode. I went through a few different options, but nothing really like felt real or right for me. And then yesterday, I had two sessions with clients that are literally on the opposite sides of the world from each other. And the concept of nakedness came up for both of them. So it got me to thinking about all of my own struggles with this thing. This idea of nakedness and being seen and being bare. And so last week's episode, or I think it was actually week before last episode 60, the psychology of hate, we talked about why humans hate and a part of that we discussed very briefly was this fear of self you know this this fear of of who we are and this lack of understanding now you all know uh, that fear is a product of lack of information and so it's a product of the unknown right which is a lack of information and so the best way for you to combat fear is to gather information and we gather that information from all different places okay and so getting naked is one of the ways that we can gather that information. And so that's what we're going to talk about today, standing naked in the mirror. Okay. Now, typically, the first thing that people go to when when we talk about getting naked, like when you do a Google search, because y'all know I be doing research for y'all or whatever, you know, but when you when you do a Google search, the first thing that comes up about being naked or like standing naked in the mirror is always about body image issues. And don't get me wrong, like, this is it's a real thing. Like there's a lot of women and men, actually, to be honest, who don't you know, they have we have these body image issues. And and a lot of people have a very difficult time looking at themselves in the mirror. And and they never really get past though, like the physical component of looking at themselves in the mirror. Okay, but it's about so much more, we have all of this fear of what we could possibly uncover if we really were to allow ourselves to get naked, just bare bones naked. And that fear stops us from exploring who we are. And so what happens is that we never end up getting past the surface level with ourselves. And we wonder why we cannot make connections with others, deep meaningful connections with others. It's because we haven't even mastered that connection with ourselves. And so when I talk about getting naked, I'm talking about vulnerability. I'm talking about putting yourself intentionally, putting yourself in your most vulnerable state. But as naked, Looking yourself in the eye, standing in the mirror. Seeing yourself in your purest, most raw form. It's impossible to escape every nook and cranny in your body and in your heart. You see everything. And when you really make the effort, you feel everything. And for a lot of us, that's a scary thought, you know, because we put a whole lot of effort into not feeling nothing. And so we can't look ourselves in the eye. Shit, we can't even look other people in the eye because we're afraid 
of what we're going to see. We're afraid that either we're going to see something that we don't think we can live up to, or we're going to see something that we despise, or we're going to see something that we knew was there and we don't know what to do with it. Something that we're afraid of for one reason or another. Right? So when you are shedding your clothes, it's a symbolic gesture. It's not just about standing in the mirror naked and being naked. It's not just about sexuality and sensuality. So it's a it's a symbolic gesture and it's about shedding the expectations of others. Okay? We are surrounded by the curated images of what or who we should be. Every time, everywhere we look, they're telling us we need to look like this. We need to be like that. We need to do this. We need to do that. I was talking to one of my clients um, yesterday, actually. And, you know, my client, she kind of had a little breakthrough. And I was really excited for her about, it, 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 you know, a win. She definitely had a win. And what she was saying is that she came to the realization that it's extremely unlikely that she's going to be in the 1%, right? Financially, we're talking here, financially. And so she's aware that the likelihood of her entering the 1% is slim to none. But she also realized that she doesn't actually want or need that. Like there's nothing in her that made her feel like she needed to be a part of the 1%. That expectation came from the outside world. And she was making herself absolutely miserable holding on to the expectations of others or holding herself to the expectations of others. Because in reality, she makes more than enough money to live the life that she wants and needs to live and to set herself up for her future. But she couldn't allow herself to enjoy that or to just kind of be okay with that because she felt like she needed to be striving to be in this 1% club. And it made me realize that I've been doing the same damn thing, not necessarily when it comes to finances, but in other areas of my life. You know, I think I feel like I talked to y'all about this before. Um, and it's definitely one of the things that we're going to be talking about during the um, the heart to heart segment that I'll be doing on blackmaryfly.com starting on March 11th, shameless plug or whatever, you know, but but, you know, even in my marriage, like I had this idea in my mind of what it meant to be a good wife. And I wasn't allowing myself the space that I needed to just be the kind of wife that I am. You know, I kept trying to fulfill this expectation of, of what a good wife is supposed to be. And like, where did that even come from? Where did that even come from? So I was holding myself to this expectation and driving myself crazy trying to be a good wife when the reality is that I'm a good fucking wife anyway. Whatever I do, however I show up for my husband is sufficient for him because I am the woman that he married as is. Right. So we hold ourselves to these expectations that are not our own. And we layer these things on us. And so in my opinion, getting naked and getting bare is about removing those expectations. It's about standing there in your rawest, purest, most simplistic form and finding a way to accept it. You know? Finding a way to be okay with what and who you are. Now, I recognize that this is a, a challenge for a lot of us, okay? So I'm giving y'all some homework. Y'all already knew the homework was coming. Go on and write it down. Your homework is to stand naked in the mirror, in silence, no music playing, 
try to put the wait till the kids go to bed. No husband trying to get a little something. No wife or girlfriend or side piece. You know, no judgment. Y'all know that's a judgment free zone. You know what I'm saying? All right. Just you. Just you. You're going to start off by standing in front of the mirror. Whatever clothes you have on. You ain't got to go put clothes on in order to do this. It's come as you are. Okay. Come as you are. And you're going to stand in the mirror, ideally a floor length mirror. But if you as long as you can get waist up, then that's a thing. If you can't get waist up, then neck up is fine, too. The idea is that you are going to make eye contact with yourself. And you're going to try your best to sustain that contact, that eye contact, because there's something about making deep, meaningful eye contact with somebody. It really fosters a sense of intimacy, right? When you make eye contact with somebody, it's like you see in inside of them. It's a very moving experience. And an experience that I think is not limited to being had with an outside entity. You can have that moment with yourself, okay? So you're standing in the mirror in complete silence and you are making intentional eye contact, sustained eye contact with yourself. And you are going to remove one piece of clothing at a time. And as you are removing that article of clothing, I want you to consider what removing that layer means to you. I want you to think about what expectations you are removing from your body? What expectations you're removing from your life? What are you freeing yourself from? Okay? Every time you take an article of clothing off, I want you to assign that to a removal of an expectation until you are completely bare butt ass naked in the mirror okay and then I want you to stand there for one full minute at least and just make eye contact with yourself and look at yourself and accept who you are now I'm gonna warn y'all you probably gonna cry (laughs) okay and no I ain't just trying to make you cry but I'm telling you that you probably gonna cry okay because that's you know this is a it's a powerful a very very powerful activity it just is and especially if you are not comfortable with yourself if you've never looked at yourself in that way it's it's gonna be difficult And so if you're not able to get through the whole thing the first time, that's okay. Try it again and try it again and try it again until you can, until you get there. But don't be afraid of those fear, uh, those tears. Don't be afraid of those thoughts. Don't be afraid of what you might learn because anything that you learn about yourself gives you an opportunity to grow. All right. So I'm looking forward to hearing what this experience was like for you during our live check chat on uh, Instagram live on Monday night at 7 30 p.m. on my uh, Instagram page at Latrice Sampson Richards you know if something comes up for you um, that you are struggling to process or deal with because some things might come up for you okay some things that maybe you didn't know were there or you knew were there and you just you know you're not prepared at this moment to really deal with if something comes up for you let me know Shoot me an email um, at support at LatriceSampsonRichards.com. And I'm going to do my best to try to talk you through it or walk you through it and guide you through that process of of dealing with whatever that is. And if I can't, if it's more than, well, I mean, I can, but if it's more than what I can give you in the scope of an email or something, then um, I will point you in the direction of the next steps if that's what you need. Okay. All right. Coming up next is high five. This episode of Unicorns Talk is also brought to you by the Black Unicorn Project.com. The Black Unicorn Project is an online community center dedicated to the healing and advancement of Black culture and well being. 
Go to theblackunicornproject.com to check out our take on black music, finance, current events, and wellness around the world. That's theblackunicornproject.com for a new take on a familiar atmosphere. All right, so this week we actually have two high fives, okay? Um, The first high five goes to my girl, Cardi B. Y'all already know how I feel about Cardi B. I love me some Cardi B. I actually had a dream. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I had a dream that I met Cardi B and I told her that I'd be talking about her on my show. And she was like, oh, girl, bitch, you so cold. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, bitch. I, I said, I'm going to name a segment after you call shit I learned from Cardi. You know, she was like, oh, yeah, bitch, you should do that. You know what I'm saying? So that was cool. That was a good little dream or whatever. But I want to give a, shot, uh, a high five to Cardi B because Cardi B won her first Grammy. She won a Grammy for Best Rap Album and... And I'm so overjoyed for her. Like, I'm I'm genuinely excited and overjoyed for her. Um, you know, I, she worked hard. She worked hard. And, and I just love to see her rise, you know. And I told y'all, I owned that, you know, in the beginning, I was not, like, checking for Cardi B. But I really had to, like, check myself and my own biases to understand why I was really blocking. Like, I wasn't even giving her a chance, you know. And I realized that that was... Was more about me than it was ever about her and once I resolved that for myself I fell in love with Cardi B like I really really enjoy her and I really do root for her I think she is a genuine spirit she's a genuine person um, I think she deserves everything that she's getting right now um, you know the look of pure excitement and joy uh, on her face like that it was genuine like she was genuinely appreciative of receiving that award. Uh, I even like the fact that, I mean, look, y'all say what y'all want to say about Offset. You know what I'm saying? A nigga does a whole lot, you know? But I, I really appreciated, like, you could see the look of pride on his face. Like, that man was proud of his wife. Like, she won that fucking Grammy, and he was proud of her for that, you know? And it was a moment that they were able to share together as husband and wife, because like it or not, they are husband and wife. Everybody always has something to say about people relationship, but you don't know, you know what I'm saying? You you just, you don't know. And so I, you know, and I, I really love that she made sure to point out that he was a strong supporter of her because she was pregnant while she was making the album and when she you know was feeling tired and stuff he was like oh no bitch you making this album you know like he was really like had her back and and supported her and she highlighted that and so high five to Cardi B for winning best rap album um at the Grammys you know I think you deserve it and I'm I'm very proud of you and I can't wait to see what comes up next you know and then my second high five for today goes to Miss Billy Porter. Okay, listen, Billy Porter is the star, one of the stars of Pose. And if you have not gotten into Pose, you need to get into it. Okay, Um, he actually got a job this year hosting uh, the pre-show for the Oscars. And when I tell you, bitch, Miss Billy did not come to play with you hoes. Miss Billy did not come to play. Billy showed up in a black velvet tuxedo gown by Christian Siriano and it was everything when I tell you he had gave a life he had gave all the life okay it was so elegant like it was a straight up tuxedo at the top and then full on ball gown at the bottom in complete black velvet like it was a amazing it was amazing and um I know y'all saw that meme going around of Glenn Close when she had caught a little a little visual and she was like oh yes bitch who is this you know what I'm saying she had fell in love instantly you know um high five to Billy Porter for really being at the forefront of 
making it okay to be who you are. You know, um, I was reading in Ebony magazine, he had did an article and he said, um, he said, and quote, people are going to be really uncomfortable with my black ass in a ball gown, but it's not anybody's business, but mine. And I was like, you are so right. Like high five to Billy Porter for just being vulnerable and and being willing to be naked you know what I'm saying and to like show who he is and and to just be who he is and and be unapologetic about that like high five high freaking five to Mr. Miss Billy Porter okay all right and in the vein of being you know naked and showing yourself and being vulnerable today's reality check um is about that you know um I have this girl that I follow on Instagram you know if you follow me on Instagram I follow back so follow or whatever and uh she followed me and so I don't know her personally but I really like her and I I was looking for I think her name is Erica and I think she is an aspiring therapist herself she's still in school I believe but she has shown up on my timeline a few times now and every time I see her I like fall in love with her over and freaking over and freaking over again you know what I'm saying this young lady, I think what I love about her is her fearlessness. Like she posts these videos on her Instagram page of her just dancing and just doing all different like like just just dancing and being free and trying new things. And she don't have no rhythm. You know what I'm saying? She don't have any rhythm. She ain't a dancer, but she is just being unapologetic and she's putting herself on display. And I freaking love it. And so, you know, I wanted to definitely do a shout out to her. Shout out, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, if, you, if you're listening, girl, go on and send me a message because I was looking for your page so I could get your name right. But for some reason, you're not showing up on my page that mean you need to post another video real soon you know what I'm saying but when um but I, I wanted to you know do a reality check today that we cannot take our lives so seriously I know we tackle a lot of really serious topics on the show and you know I try to make them as interesting for y'all as possible I really do and I hope that you know I succeed I mean y'all keep listening or whatever so hopefully I am succeeding at that you know but we cannot take our lives so seriously we have to be willing and able to allow ourselves to enjoy life and to dance a little you know maybe even dance naked in the mirror or whatever you know do something do something unexpected do something that feels childlike do something that if somebody saw you doing that they would be like bitch what is wrong with you you know what I'm saying but do it anyway because you're not doing it for them you're doing it for you and so I just that's that's the reality check is that you're not doing it for them you're doing it for you so do it any fucking way all right I do want to give a few shout outs uh of course you know shout out to Black Mary Fly podcast I'm actually going to be their special guest. I sat down with Treb and Candace. See, I still call him Treb, although he changed his name officially back to Rob. So hey, Rob Immortal. But I told him I was just going to keep calling him Treb because that's I'm just that's he's trapped to me. But anyway, uh, Black Married Fly podcast. I'm going to be their special guest this week. So y'all make sure y'all check out uh, Black Married Fly podcast. We're talking all about relationships and things. You know, we have the uh, heart to heart with Latrice Sampson. Richards is going to be kicking off in just two weeks um, from Monday. And so y'all make sure y'all check that out. I want to give a shout out to Crystal Clear podcast. I don't always get to listen to Crystal Clear, but I do enjoy her. And and I was listening, trying to get caught up on a few of her episodes lately or recently. And it just reminded me of what I love about her. I love her vulnerability. Like her whole show is about her journey and it's about her figuring things out and getting clarity about who she is and where it is that she's trying to go and who she desires to be. And so shout out to Crystal Clear and Crystal Clear Podcast. Y'all make sure y'all check her out. I also want to give a shout out to the Chi Theta Zeta chapter once again. 
president of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority in Tallahassee, Florida. Thank you so much for having me come out for the Gun Violence and Black Mental Health uh, Summit. You know, I, I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to working with y'all again. If you want me to come and speak on your panel or do a keynote or anything like that, you can hit me up. Uh, send me an email at support at LatriceSampsonRichards.com and we can make it happen. OK, I also want to give a huge, huge, huge shout out to my line sisters, the 16 Cries of Confusion Theta Xi chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Happy 15 year anniversary, line sisters. I love y'all. I know we don't always get together, but I fucking love y'all. Like for real, for real, I love y'all. And so happy 15 year anniversary. This is a big year for us. We got a lot of things going on this year. And so I can't wait to see y'all and spend time with y'all and reconnect with y'all. And I could not imagine having spent the last 15 years with anybody else. Okay. Love y'all. All All right. Just a few announcements. Again, check me out on Black Mary Fly podcast tomorrow, uh, this Thursday. uh, We're going to be talking about love and relationships and things like that. And I actually did a little mini session real quick with Trev and Candice. So y'all want to make sure y'all check that out. Definitely purchase your Unicorns Talk podcast swag right there on the website. Go to LatriceSampsonRiches.com. Click on the podcast tab uh, or the shop tab, either one, and you can make your purchases there. Make sure y'all come and talk to me. Let me know how your vulnerability standing in the mirror naked situation went at uh, on Monday night at 730 p.m. on Instagram for Unicorns Talk Back and join my free Facebook group Trust Village, a safe space for healing and manifestation. We'd love to have you be a part of the family. Uh, I do a free live stream every Tuesday inside of Trust Village and I would like for you to be there or whatever. All right. Make sure you follow me on all of the social media at Latrice Sampson Richards. I still have the at Unicorns Talk Pod Instagram, but I'm kind of transitioning to doing everything on Latrice Sampson Richards. Y'all know social media is not my thing and I be struggling with it. So I've decided to consolidate so you can really get all of the information about the podcast and everything else I have going on on Facebook and Instagram at Latrice Sampson Richards. Okay. That's all I got for y'all today. I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. And until next time, be well. Bye, y'all.